Hello everyone, this is Mr. Martinez. Um, if you don't know me, I teach government and economics at Carter. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes just to uh, update everybody on what is a brewing national crisis in the United States. Um, you can't necessarily wait until you're in government class to learn about important issues that are you know, active and growing in the country we all live in. Uh, so I just wanted to just, just take a small amount of time to fill everybody in on that, give a few details just so you understand, and then maybe a couple bits of information on what you can do about it. So the situation is essentially that um, over the last few days, uh, one of the Supreme Court justices has died um, from a disease, and she had been on the court for a long time. If you're not familiar with the Supreme Court in the U.S., it's the highest court that exists in the entire country and makes a lot of very important decisions. Apologize, my brother's dog's walking by there. Um, but so whenever a justice resigns or dies, the president, according to the Constitution, gets to um, appoint a new justice. And it's actually written in the Constitution, which is, an, you know, obviously a very important document uh, that our country, you know, bases most of its laws on. It's certainly at a national level. And so Article 2, sec Section 2 states very clearly, it says, The president shall have power by and with the advice and consent of the Senate to make treaties provided two-thirds of the senators present concur, which means agree, and he, he or she shall nominate and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other officers of the United States whose appointments are not here and otherwise provided for and which shall be established by law. So anyway, the president is allowed the sitting president to appoint these justices. Well, if it's the highest court in the entire United States, you can bet it's probably you know an extremely important position. Um, the issue is that in 2016, the uh, Senate at the time, which is, you know, the, you know one of the highest elected uh, bodies of law in the country, they decided that they were not going to allow the president at the time to appoint a justice. At the time, it was President Obama. And they said it was too close to an election. And so, you know, that's fine. That was the decision that was made. And, uh, you know, the president at the time was not able to carry forth their a constitutional right to be able to do so. Uh, the election took place and the new president did so. The reason at the time that was stated that they were going to do that is because they said that the American people needed to decide through the election um, which president was going to be able to appoint this justice for the for the one that had died in, in 2016. Um, so now, over the last few days, um, another Supreme Court justice has died. So we're in a very similar situation. Um, but the Senate this time has decided that they were going to, or that they are going to, it, it looks like, um, at least consider putting a justice up. So the similar, this situation is very similar, uh, but they've uh, changed their mind on how the rule is going to be followed. So uh, four, four years ago, they decided not to follow the Constitution, and now they're thinking that they're going to actually follow it. And, e and even though it's not almost 11 months before the election, it is now um, just a few weeks, actually, just a little bit over a month. And so the reason I didn't just call this a constitutional crisis and I call it a national crisis is because um, it, I think it's going to be perceived as cheating by a lot of people. Uh, let me just allow you another example, if you would, um, so you guys understand. So let's say that wherever you live, there's a rule that says if you finish all your homework, you can pick a snack out of the snack drawer, right? You can go get whatever you want if you finish your homework up. Well, let's say that you finished your homework and asked somebody there who's in charge if I can go get my snack. And they say, hey, I know that's a rule that we've got, but you cannot get your snack because we're gonna eat dinner in about two hours. And you're like, hmm, all right, well that wasn't really written in the agreement, but whatever, you know, maybe you're a little bit upset or whatever, and you go on with your day, go on with your life. Well, let's say the next week, your sibling, a brother or sister, or, you know, somebody else in your imagination in this example, in the household, they finish all their homework and go ask for their snack and the adult in charge says, hey, we're gonna eat dinner in about 10 minutes, but you can go ahead and go pick any snack you want out of the snack drawer. So uh, obviously in that situation, you would probably feel like you had been cheated because the week before you were told no snack, we're eating in two hours, but your other you know, member of the family is now allowed their snack with 10 minutes until dinner time. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. And uh, so essentially just to close this out and uh, not take too long, um, and when it comes to rules not being followed, I, I think it creates a very, very uh, disturbing and very potentially dangerous situation. Um, I have been a soccer referee for now 15 years, and I've seen time and time again what happens whenever one team or players are not protected by the laws of the game. Me as the referee, the one who's supposed to make sure those are enforced. 
Um, if I fail to see fouls or if I watch another game and the referee is not calling them, particularly for one team, then those players and individuals feel like it is now their duty to take it into their own hands to make sure that they are represented. And that usually uh, results in more fouls being committed by them or outright fights and, you know, like aggression and anger and just a feeling of uh, they're not being looked after by the rules, and so they're not going to follow the rules themselves. Hey, if you can foul me and it's okay, then I'm going to foul you even harder. It's going to be okay too because that's the way the rules are now being ignored essentially. Um, and so as a, as a country and as a people, if the rules are not going to be followed for one group and they're going to be changed and the line's going to be erased and redrawn whenever the other group wants you know things their way, this is not an issue of uh, politics in terms of political parties. It's an issue of just um, fairness. It's a, it's a raw issue of if you're going to do things for one side in one situation, it should be adhered to, followed, and respected for all situations. And that's what I think rules and laws are made for, I think. You know, it's not like you have to wear your seatbelt only if you're one race or ethnicity. Everybody's got to wear their seatbelt. You can get a ticket, right? Um, that's the way it should be and I believe, all situations, including this one. Um, and so, um, essentially... Uh, there's a quote that I like um, when it when it comes to this kind of this kind of deal. You know, we're, we're not elected officials. Uh, we we have jobs, or we're students in this. You know, at our school as teachers or principals, or like I said, you guys who have to you know turn your grades in and so forth. But uh, we all are living in the United States right now, and you have to just essentially ask yourself what your role is whenever things aren't going the correct way. And I think that you can, well, not think, it's a fact. You guys can look up your uh, senators. You can look up your your House of Representative members. You can look up uh, anybody who works in the government just through the internet. Most of you have it on your phones, or you can go to your laptop or just find it almost anywhere. You can call them. Uh, you can, you know, fill up their voicemails. You can write them uh, regular written letters. You can send emails. And you can talk to people in your community. You can talk to your friends and families. You can talk to anybody who will listen and let them know that there is something that is going to erode, right? It's going to erase away people's confidence in the government because people are not willing to play fairly. And once again, whenever uh, fairness gets thrown out the window, then people aren't, aren't feeling so good about the system. And uh, yeah, we have a very large, very powerful country. And if people don't feel good and feel confidence in the system, then I think that you do find yourself in a uh, likely very dangerous um, predicament. And so yes, uh, standing up to you, this is a quote I like, standing up to your government can mean standing up for your country. So if you have to stand up to things the government is not doing well, then that's actually standing up for the country you live in and that you love and that you want yourself uh, to live in well and for future generations to also live into um, as we move on to the future. So anyway, yes, I hope that video wasn't too long. I appreciate your attention. And once again, as a government teacher at Carter Riverside, um, I just want to make sure everybody's up to date with very important issues. Like I said, I don't want to wait, you know, three years down the road if you freshmen, you know, are wanting to learn about things. Everybody in the campus and community and country deserves to know about important issues and to be encouraged uh, to do all they can to ensure that they are followed in the best way for all of the people living here. So everybody have a great semester. I look forward to uh, talking or seeing you all again soon. And uh, thanks again.